Good morning. Welcome to episode number 18 of the Zoomtown Experiment. For today's episode, we're going to be working on the battery deck. And that'll supply all the power needed for the Zoomy. Let's first take a look at an overview of what we're going to cover. We'll look at a commercial type battery case that I could have used, but instead opted for a DIY design of the bat for the battery deck. I wanted it uh, to be an all-inclusive design. And that'll make sense in a minute. Uh, we'll show you a look at how the PCBs were made. They're very, very simple in this particular application. And we'll show you soldering of the cell contacts and the leads. Finally, it'll be the assembly of the battery deck and how it becomes one with the Zoomy chassis. Let's take a look at the schematic. And we showed you this in last week's episode, but the only component we're working on right now is this area bounded by that dashed line. This will be where the two 18650 cells go. You'll see that they're wired in series. We're going to have a PCB here with a couple of battery contacts, a PCB here also with a couple of battery contacts, and finally we will have two flying leads. Don't know the exact length yet that we need, so we'll leave them a little bit long at this time. This will show you roughly how all the components go together. And here we can see the two 18650 cells, a spring-loaded contact here for the negative side, and a solid contact for the positive side of the battery. Negative over here, and positive over here. So as you can see, this will be wired up in series. This animation will show you how I designed and constructed the battery deck. And finally, with the batteries installed, if I spin it around, here's our little 3D printed retainer clip. This item is 3D printed. This will be a PCB, as will this, and then the commercially purchased battery contacts. Now let's take a look at the whole lower portion of the Zoomy thus far. Motors going in, wheels going on, caster wheel going on, magnets for the encoders, little capture uh, bracket for the power converter and the dr motor drive, and finally the battery deck that we are working with today or constructing today. Now there is another assembly that will go above this to finish up the entire power system, but that should be what we're going to look like by the end of this video. Over here on the workbench, this is our Zoomy as it currently exists, and we're working on the battery deck. That would be this component here, which will mount on standoffs in the four corners, and that'll lift it up above this area. We've got our two 18650 cells. These are Samsung versions, which I found to be quite nice, but sometimes hard to find. You think you're buying the Samsung ones based on what we see either in uh, AliExpress or Amazon, but uh, you get kind of looped into buying a, perhaps a cheaper brand. Uh, but these are our four standoffs that this will sit on. The batteries would go into here. This would be our output end, so to speak, of our battery compartment. There is the dividing uh, cut so that these two terminal pads are independent of each other. We'd have a spring-loaded contact here, solid contact there. This one would be our positive, so I'm going to put on a 20-gauge stranded wire there and a 20-gauge stranded wire here, red and black, to indicate polarity. On the opposite end, this PCB, along with these two uh, purchase components will be soldered onto here, and that is actually the end cap for the battery compartment. And then this little clip fits into there and locks it all in place. Now, it might seem like a lot of work when you can just purchase one of these devices. 
But even if I purchase this, besides the fact that it's going to run up costs, I still have to come up with a way to mount it. So most likely, I'm already going to have to design and build the mid-deck or the battery deck to hold and contain this. So yes, in truth, it would have saved me a little bit of work, but in reality, I don't think there's any real advantage to it. And it would also make it more complicated in that I would have to have a connector for the battery connection wires. So to me, this was the most logical solution and it gives me the greatest amount of customization and so forth for creating our battery deck. Making the PCB was rather easy. The shape is very easy to program. I didn't need CAD or CAM or anything like that. Uh, just simply wrote up the G code, put it in the router and let it cut away. It didn't cut all the way through. I usually leave a little skin back there so that the parts don't go flying away. And then here is how the two pieces would be fitting inside our battery deck. If you haven't seen these types of cutters yet, this is what they look like. Tiny little uh, end mills, if you will. They've got serrated flutes on them so that they cut rather nicely. This particular one is about three millimeters in diameter or an eighth of an inch for us people here in the US. Moving on to assembly, I went to my larger metal vise for this. I'm gonna to have to get this really hot for the solder to bond here, as well as to our contacts. And I find that if I have this completely inside the vice jaws, usually the vice jaws can draw away too much heat. So if I clamp it out like this, working in this area, I get a little more heat to stay here, and it goes a little more quickly. You will also need to hold this thing in place while you're doing it. Now the clips naturally come, or the contacts come, with this extra tab at the top. I just use an older pair of side cutters, line it up on there where I want to cut it, and it clips right off. Now I do have some flux here that I may need to put on the back of this, and now I'll start working on getting some solder on here. I don't need this whole surface covered in solder, and if you see closely here, you'll probably pick up the outline of our contact. And I just want to get maybe on the four corners of it. It's kind of round, but we'll call it four corners. Uh, get some solder in those areas like so. And it goes pretty quick. This is a good soldering iron. It's uh, an older one, a uh, Heiko. 936, but it served me well. I'm not going to diddle around. I'm just going to get a little flux on here right away. Hopefully that'll speed it up a bit. And yes, that's still a little bit on the hot side. Now I'm going to hold it down here, but I'm going to heat it up here.
I've used a variety of different adhesives for holding circuit boards into place. This stuff works pretty good. Uh, sil clear silicone caulk is one of my favorites, but I, apparently I don't have any handy. So I'm just going to smear a little of that on there. Slide that in. And this stuff's pretty tacky, so it'll probably hold it there without any need for clamps, etc. To be mounted like so. And for that, I'm going to use these, uh, I believe they're about a 13, maybe a 12 millimeter standoff. And looking at the holes there, I don't believe they are tapped yet. So I'll go through, drill and tap those holes out, run these in, and then we can mount it up. Now you might be questioning why I drill and tap this stuff and use machine screws instead of self-threading screws. Well, look at, try to find a self-threading fastener of a standoff type. So I, for me, being a machinist or have been a machinist, I'm not overly concerned about drilling and tapping. It's all part of the process for me. Now that I've got these four standoffs in place, as you can see here, that's the solid contact, the spring one. Our positive would go there. Our negative would go against the spring one. I need to put this upper deck on, but I just wanted to show you how this would go in here like so. And then, like so. So let's get the rest of the assembly together. Like so. And in truth, this component here is more for next week's video. But we're just going to get it in place so we can finish up this week's. Just going to... Snug those a little bit. Now, what's going to happen when I go to put this in, we've got to compress this spring and this spring. So it is a little bit on the tricky side. Now, as you can imagine, with this battery in like so, and the other battery in, we're going to be pushing against these springs. So it is a little bit cumbersome, uh, but it's Perhaps not as bad as it may look. I'm going to slide that cell in, negative side toward the spring. Got the spring, we've got negative positive. So we will reach in here, push that forward like so. And we will slide in our little clip. And now we have our battery deck. Completed. Little bit of fitting to do on it yet. Well, that'll wrap it up for this week's video. We've got our battery deck completed, and now we're ready to move on to the power distribution deck, which is for next week's episode number 19. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.